Office and the Luan's Office focus on creating opportunities for smaller meat processing facilities or meat harvesting facilities in New Mexico. The national organization, but they now have introduced what's called AgWell. And so I'm um, happy to get you all and anybody additional information about that program so that we make sure we take care of our farmers and managers and those who are a part of this whole food system who are taking care of us. Right. So thank you. Thanks for sharing. And we know there's hope because there's lots of people like you who are there for us. And I really appreciate what you do. Thank you so much. I care so much. Um, I'm going to introduce, and this is on, he's on Zoom, he's virtual with us. Thanks to virtual happening, right? So much for having me. I'm, I'm really honored to be able to hear to be here to speak. Um, I wanted to open my remarks though with a quote from a, a website called Farmer State of Mind. It says, "Farming is a stressful occupation that is associated with increased levels of anxiety and depression. Multiple studies show that farmer suicide rates are two to five times higher than the national average." Experiences such as natural disasters, extreme weather events, financial uncertainty, fluctuating markets, labor shortages, trade disruptions, and other factors all contribute to extreme stress for farmers and ranchers who often live in a very isolated setting. It's important to break the stigma around mental health challenges and encourage those who are struggling to reach out for help we can do that by normalizing conversation around stress, mental health, mental illness, and suicide. We can learn more about what it is and how to help someone who is struggling. Talking openly helps remove the stigma, and stigma is the number one reason that people do not seek help. Suicide and suicidal feelings are complex. Depression, which is more than sadness, and anxiety are both connected to suicide. We all have periods of languishing and flourishing in our lives with or without a mental illness, but with an untreated mental illness, uh, a mental health condition, which is the same as a mental illness, it can be especially challenging to meet the demands of life. There's a deep psychological pain for someone contemplating suicide. It is suffering and it feels hopeless. I've heard it said that suicide is akin to being in a burning building and the choice is to burn to death or to jump. Along with suicidal feelings might be an underlying clinical depression or anxiety that could require treatment. Often treatment looks like counseling or medication and other lifestyle changes. Just think for a moment about some of the barriers that keep people from seeking out any care. Lack of providers, lack of insurance, shame, embarrassment, and of course stigma. 47% of Americans see therapy as a weakness because sharing private information is perceived as fearful and shameful. This is the analogy that we use in our survivors of suicide support groups. Just imagine there's a cup of water. It's sitting on a table and it's so full that it's rounded at the top. One or two more drops are added and it spills over. What caused the, the water to spill? We want to blame the last one or two drops, but in an empty cup, it wouldn't spill. It was not the water in the cup prior to the drops being added because if left alone, it wouldn't have spilled. It was a combination of all the drops in the cup that came before and the last one or two that caused the water to spill. In a person's life, the water in the cup is symbolic of all the hurt, pain, shame, humiliation, perhaps an untreated mental illness or loss that has not been dealt with. The last couple drops symbolizes the last straw in a final event that precedes the final act of taking one's own life. Often we want to blame the last straw, but that, that doesn't make sense. Like the water, 
the events all by themselves would not cause someone to end their life. It's the combination of everything in that person's life not dealt with and the last one or two things that caused them to lose hope. So how can we help? Talking it over with others who are facing similar stresses and circumstances, sharing emotions and feeling that you're validated, having someone to bear witness to what you're feeling, the pain and the stress. We could ask questions like, I've noticed you haven't been the same lately. Are you okay? And then keep listening as you might help them to find their own possible solutions to the problems that they face. Not every problem has a quick solution, but only what is in their control. And that list that I mentioned of all of those stressors, none of those have an easy fix, right? And they may not be within that person's control, but to have somebody who's willing to give them the gift of presence and to listen to the stresses and maybe come up with some kind of a solution. In our Survivors of Suicide group, we ask, how are you really? And then we listen. And you can certainly use the word suicide when you're asking someone how they're feeling. That doesn't give them the idea because they may have already thought about it. It can actually relieve some of the stress. We ask, are you thinking about suicide? We don't say it. You aren't thinking about suicide, are you? So that makes it feel like we don't really want to be there to hear you if you are struggling with those feelings. So secondly, we can know some warning signs. Change in routines or social activities. Um, decline in the care of domestic animals. Increase in illness or other chronic conditions. Increase in farm accidents. That one surprised me a lot. I think about um, how dangerous this work could be with all of that heavy machinery. And it could be an easy way for someone to think about just ending. Um, decline in appearance of the farmstead and decreased in interest in activities or events. Secondly, we can use websites like the one I shared from Farmer's State of Mind for resources and tools that can help somebody feel they're not alone and specifically targeting farmers and ranchers who are often so isolated. There's another national program called the National Alliance on Mental Illness and it offers lots of tools and resources too to help someone who is struggling. Number three, none of this really fixes the lack of mental health providers in our state. Um, I know there's telehealth, but often rural areas don't have connectivity and aren't able to access that. Um, so I really think about how there's no easy answers to these issues, but until then, or if we can help someone empty that cup, that's what we can do to help to make a difference. If you are worried about someone getting help, you should call that 9888 number with them. Ask if you can make that call. It's the National Suicide Hotline, which is actually trunked here to the New Mexico Crisis Access Line. And if you, if that, you are so worried about that person, you can take them to the nearest emergency room so that we can have one less person take their life here in New Mexico. Thank you. Thanks, Desiree. And, I, and we know 